Hey everyone, it's me Hawkeye G here with another video for you. This video is a brief overview of the first 10 to 20 turns of a Karl Franz Reichland campaign in Immortal Empires. It's focused on the first phase of the campaign, simply taking out the Empire Secessionists and unifying your first province. This will only take about 10 to 15 turns though, maybe even 20 turns as possible depending on your approach and your success in battle. I've got a long format video that goes through this entire process step by step, but this video is just meant to hit the highlights. We're going to talk about things like research, economy and infrastructure buildings, units and army composition, your lord skill point choices, the diplomacy situation, the overall campaign strategy, and touch on elector counts and imperial authority. This is meant to be a quicker video, so without any further delay, let's get into it. So starting with research, I believe there are four main sections we should work on for research. The trade and industry section, as growth is nice, but the local militia skill specifically will give us some extra edge early on. The imperial colleges section can get us income increase and then research speed. We also want the armor boosting research for infantry, and we basically want all of the research for missile infantry, as they're all going to be quite good. These are pretty much your research focus for the next 40 to 50 turns or so. I'm still not exactly sure which one is the best to start with. I usually choose research speed, but that alone isn't enough to have much impact on your research. It might be better to push for local militia upgrade first instead. When it comes to your economy and the buildings you select, um, basically with your economy, you want to be pushing mostly income. You can still get growth easily enough the province, and as you level up settlements, you'll have room to fill in with growth buildings, but early on you should be stacking income buildings as much as you can. The main exception is Grunberg, where the resource building gives both growth and income, and that's true for the port at Altdorf as well. At Tier 3, you'll want to ensure you get a Forges building for handgunners, as they'll be critical for fighting the Warriors of Chaos to the north. It's also a good time to briefly get the Warrior Priest building just to recruit one, then swapping to the Mages building to recruit and get a capacity increase for them. Minor settlements can also get a Warrior Priest building for capacity increase. When it comes to the units you recruit and your army composition, in the early stages of the game here, I think we just want an even split of swordsmen and crossbowmen. Ultimately, you want about 10 melee infantry and 10 missile or ranged units in your army. If you like shielded spearmen, I think that it's fine to swap, but I don't think it's necessary. We spend the first few turns recruiting swordsmen and avoiding archers for as long as we can since they're weak. However, once we have our 10 melee units, we start recruiting archers so we have the 10 ranged units for a nice balance. I will convert the archers over to crossbowmen as soon as I get the chance, however. And this may require the assistance of an additional lord as well. But we can do that because we've chosen to prioritize income buildings and can afford to make these kinds of decisions. Now, as for your Lord skill point selection, for Franz, I think the red skill line is important early on. It's easy to get some good boost to your swordsmen and your crossbowmen, and these bonuses will stay relevant for a long time and with other units as well. It'll give you a good edge in the early game, and even one skill point into your melee infantry can pretty much be on par with a, an entire technology bonus. I also think it's useful to invest somewhat in his personal skill tree early on. He's got a good weapon and pretty good stats, but overall isn't survivable as one might like for a legendary lord. Grabbing that melee defense, a bit of health increase, and then some melee attack will be useful for him early on. Maybe even grabbing the armor, but I don't think that'll be as good because of his high base. When it comes to diplomacy, your main considerations are to prioritize friendships with people close to you. Kislev will definitely be asking you for a trade deal once you're producing trade goods, uh, but that will be well before we know if they'll make a worthwhile long-term ally or not. Instead, you're looking to get Middenland and Talabekland in good graces, so you can move through their territory in the near future. You also want Wissenland to be your friend, but usually they're not quite so inclined. Otherwise, there's not much to say. You're basically planning to be friends with all the Empire, as there's enough enemies to go around. As for your campaign strategy, I find the first few turns to be pretty scripted. I always end up at Ubersreich on the same turn, with the same overall situation going on. From here, it's about prioritizing taking over the fort, and then eliminating whatever standing army the secessionists have. This can be done in one of two ways, either using ambush stance to trick the army into attacking Ubersreich, or simply cutting it off at the mountain pass and catching it out. Otherwise, going into encamp stance, placing yourself out in the open in your own territory, and waiting until they have enough troops to attack you can be a good strategy. 
The ambush strategy does rely a little bit more on luck. You might get your ambush detected a few times and it takes too long to take out their armies. Uh, but the in-camp stance does require that you feel you can confidently fight out and win a battle where you're outnumbered and the AI thinks you should lose. The real goal here is to capture the fort and to be able to attack it and capture it in the same turn when there is no army present in the fort. That's your best going. That's going to be your best opportunity to be victorious. Once you've taken the fort, uh, you really you can do whatever it takes to eliminate their remaining armies. You don't have to worry too much about having a really difficult, heavily pitched battle. The last piece will be a little bit on Elector Counts and Imperial Authority. One thing I like to try to do with Elector Counts is keep their territories balanced. When you get an option to let one count capture former territory from another, I don't like to let it go through, trying to keep everyone instead with their original province and settlements to keep them better balanced and easier to defend. You don't want to prioritize elector counts like Hawkland and Ostermark, as they will die very early on. Instead, prioritize nearby counts like Wissenland, Middenland, Stirland, and Talabekland when you can. Save your prestige for really important moments as well, especially in the early game. You don't want to spend it just because you can. You're instead saving it, looking to only use it to convert it into Imperial Authority or to prevent a civil war or secession event. So that covers everything I wanted to for this video. I hope you got some useful tips and information out of this and know how to approach the start of this campaign a little better. I definitely think there's room for flexibility in different strategies, especially once you get to the point of trying to take the fort over. But with the other tools and techniques I've talked about and that you now have on hand, it shouldn't be too hard, and you should be able to get through the start of this campaign without any troubles. The next phase of this campaign is all about moving north, taking out Kazrak, and eventually moving on to Festus, but we'll have to talk about that in the next video in the series. If you did enjoy the video, please remember to like and subscribe to keep up on future content from me. If you have any questions, please feel free to ask them in the comments section below. And if you have any advice of your own to share, I'd be happy to see that as well. Thanks for watching, have a great day, and we'll see you on the next one.